Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I'm going to start tonight with the a continuation of the attack of the polar vortex, uh, part two. And this is related to the second warming event that is going on uh, in the highest levels of the atmosphere. I mean, we're talking here in the stratosphere, okay, above where planes fly. And we have uh, right now, the way it is set up, uh, the flow comes from Siberia into northern Canada and over Greenland. And this is keeping much of the polar air out of the United States. And this is, but this is for the time being, because I want to show you what happens uh, as we move through time. And I'm just going to adjust this a little higher so I can see where we are time wise. Now, as we get into the middle of next week, we're going to have a, a strong storm, a major storm that's going to go up into the Great Lakes and create a Midwest blizzard. But as we move this along, watch what happens to this vortex. See how it orients itself north-south like here, and, and it starts to stretch? This is by, now, now we're going into Tuesday, February 9th. We have a strong cross-polar flow that is set up from Siberia uh, right across the Arctic, straight down uh, into the Midwest and northeastern part of the United States. And in fact, on this particular run, it actually splits the vortex. Now, it, it's going to wind up not keeping it that way, but uh, the split, the reason why the split is uh, important in some respects, I think it's, it may be a little overplayed at this level, but the split, if, if it were to happen, it would essentially lock the Northeast uh, into cold air for a while. And while it holds the split for a little bit, it starts to lose it uh, slightly over time. But you still have this cross-polar flow that exists even at the end of the period. So now we're at Valentine's Day, uh, Sunday, February 14th, and it runs. the flow runs from Siberia straight down into the northeastern part of the United States. So this is what the high levels of the atmosphere are telling us. And this warming episode that began about a week and a half ago usually takes about two weeks for it to actually play out in the atmosphere, so it's right on schedule. Now, we're going to go a little bit lower in the atmosphere, down at 18,000 foot level, and you'll see it a little better here of what is setting up. And it's actually, I found this quite interesting tonight when I saw it. Um, so we'll roll it back. Now, this is what's going through today. And then here we have a trough in the west, and we're going to eventually build up a strong ridge in the east in the middle part of the week with that Midwest blizzard that goes up into the Great Lakes, you see it there. And what this does is it strengthens a vortex over Hudson's Bay. So you have a flow of air that comes down, uh, right down through the Arctic into Canada, and then in south, then eventually just dives down into the Midwest. And over time, as that trough swings eastward, you have it here into the Northeast. And the vortex here doesn't really move. It just basically rotates around. Now, with respect to um, storm, storminess, and we're going to have to look at two things. One is with this vortex being very strong, whether there are embedded disturbances in the flow, which I don't think the model is going to have a good, make, uh, do a good job of showing it. And then the other issue is that we have this strong subtropical jet that runs right across the Pacific and then down into the southern states. So you're going to have weather systems crashing and coming in. But you can see through the period here as we go from once we get through the blizz the uh, Midwest storm lifts up to the northeast there. You see that vortex just kind of strengthens right in here. Uh, you have it just sits there. So that means cold air mass after cold air mass will be coming down at least into the middle part of the month. So that part of the equation uh, looks pretty bullish. Uh, the other part of the equation of the subtropical jet being in place looks fairly bu bullish. You have a strong ridge in the west. You have strong ridging in the Atlantic back to Greenland. So in my view, um, I would not focus on any specifics that the model does here at this point because we're so early in the game. <clears throat> but I will say that everything really does seem on schedule for us to go into a wintry pattern that may last for a little while, assuming that this is all correct, um, starting uh, from, say, Thursday of next week and then continuing into the middle of the month. That's the way it looks right now. So we'll see if the other models concur. 
Uh, we'll be looking at the ensembles, and of course, we'll see what the European has to say with all of this. But remember, the European only goes out to day 10 that I can see. So, But the bottom line is, even the, the European also shows it getting very cold after that Midwest storm goes by. So um, I think we have more interesting weather phenomena to go. You can see how volatile everything is. The volatility uh, uh, has been um, quite amazing. Uh, we've gone from a number of extremes, and I don't think that volatility is going to relax until all the heat produced by the El Nino is gradually absorbed by all the atmosphere and used up, and that's going to take a lot of time. So uh, get set for what's going to be a tranquil weekend. We'll get through whatever little precipitation we get through today, and enjoy your Saturday and your Sunday.